Great to have you with me. So this topic came from one of the viewers for this suggestion because it really helped me really frame what I wanted to say today. I know this person because she's a dear friend of mine. She asks the following, what's your worst experience while cruising solo? And it's a great question because as you're traveling to different areas of the world, you have quote unquote gotchas while you're traveling. And in this uh, video, I'll definitely share some of those. Please remember to like and subscribe and ring that bell. It really helps my channel out a lot and I really appreciate it. Thank you. More after this. Let's first talk about an obvious one and that is the planning mode. The only real foresight you need to have is to make sure that you have enough time to but when you're going to a different region of the world this isn't just for Asia this is literally anywhere outside of where you live we're talking very long distances we're talking flights that are you know, 16 to 24 hours in the air to even get into region you're crossing over multiple time zones so you certainly have to prepare yourself <sighs> for that type of travel because it is taxing on your body especially if you're trying to um, do this to relax as a vacation. How do you prepare for your vacation in the first place? It doesn't just start with you opening up an ad and saying, oh, I want to go to Beijing and booking that um, itinerary and then I'm off and planning is relatively simple. When you're thinking about going to a different country, you got to think about things like visas, connections, places to stay, how how much longer it takes for you to get acclimated to that time difference while you go into that different location. And these are things in, the, in my past that have caused gotchas for me. Just the whole visa process. Unless you're an international lawyer, <laughs> and I really credit those who are, and you understand the visa process, it's going to be worth your weight in salt to contract with either your travel professional, uh, AAA has some excellent people and I'm sure there are others, or some other agency that will handle the visa portions of your travel. Granted, there are some countries that you can travel to without a visa, but it's better to just invoke the help of a professional up front. They've done this many, many times. They know what's required and they'll help you through that situation. Be very careful about your flights. Now, it's true that I used a travel professional to book my cruise and to get me my travel documents, but I thought it was going to be easy for me to book flights. And it was just a matter of looking at the flight tables and, and that would be the end of it. That story goes, I found a series of flights that got me over to my cruise port, which is going to be Tianjin, China. And I was going to be um, sailing out of that point. I understood where I needed to go. I understood the hops to get there. What I didn't understand is there's really no easy way of knowing physical distances of airport locations. And so I was working with airline support. I, I flew Asiana and they were okay. You know, they had an English speaking operator and she was talking to me about my options. I guess my better judgment, this is not her fault. This is my fault because I let her talk me into it. She convinced me that my cheapest option to get there was to fly to one airport and then take public transportation, go to the second airport, and that would fly me into Tianjin and I'd be fine. Seems very reasonable to me. You figure, oh, okay, you can just hop on public transportation, get to your next spot, and you're all set. No doubt the reality of the situation was when I flew to that first airport, it was next to impossible to get anyone to really help me find where, one, where I was supposed to catch the bus, two, I thought I was pretty savvy by building in a six hour window between me getting on a bus and getting to the other airport and checking in. What ended up really happening was I landed, no one would really help me. I was, you know, one, two hours into this ordeal. And I was like, I gotta get to this other airport. My flight's gonna be leaving in four hours. I, uh, I just don't know how long it's gonna take for me to get from one airport to the next. Um, I go to the, purchase my ticket on the bus and I only had US dollars. They don't take US dollars. It's not easy to just change money. They do have ATM machines and just carrying old greenbacks isn't gonna be a great travel advice for you. You really do want to make sure you have some local currency. So I would recommend you change about 
50 to 100 US dollars into local currency. So you have some spending cash and just walk around with that. It's okay to have dollars with you, but don't expect to be able to use them in most places because they won't, they, they won't take them. I was able to get my bus and what I didn't take into consideration is I've lived in some real high traffic areas. I've lived in Boston, the traffic is horrible. I live in Seattle now and they're starting to get really bad. Still not as bad as Boston, but it's starting to get bad. I've been through New York traffic. I've been through San Francisco traffic. I've been through many traffic spots across the country. It pales in comparison to what I ran into in, in China. I get on this bus and when I mentioned that my fight was at a certain time, when I tell you this was the slowest bus, the traffic in China is dense. And I'm sure people who traveled there understand what I'm talking about. The traffic was impossible. On top of that, this bus was making tons of local stops. I thought this was like a Greyhound where it's point to point, like the airport to the airport. There are like 10 or 15 stops. The eighth and ninth stop in, I looked at my watch and I had like an hour and a half left. Uh, long story short, the bus dropped us off at like this bus hub and it was nowhere near the airport. Now I only had 45 minutes left and it was clear that there would be no way that I'd make it to the airport in time to be able to catch my flight. Now the good news is usually I fly in a day before in case there's any mix up. In my planning this time I decided to fly in three days before so I had some wiggle time. I'm glad I did that at least. It's pretty late in the day. I'm definitely going to miss my flight. So now I have to deal with calling Asiana, changing my flight to the next day, getting a new ticket basically, paying whatever fees it was to do that. So being as stubborn as I am, I said, you know what? I'm not going to risk missing my flight the next day. I'm still just going to tr travel to the airport, try to make a go at it. And it just stayed at the airport overnight. If it wasn't for this friendly couple who basically took me under their wing and I'm, what they did was they said, listen, we're not going to the airport, but you know, we don't want you to get lost. I hope you realize you're pretty far away from the airport. We'll get you there. And so they traveled with me to the airport. They didn't ask for anything, didn't ask for any money. They just said, pay it forward. I get to the airport. I was able to talk to the Asiana person who obviously told me your flight left a long time ago. You know, you're stuck. And I worked with her to, um, booked me on the very next flight. At that point, um, I really had very little money. Last mail I had was on the flight eight or nine hours earlier. I prioritized getting water and I figured, you know, if I get some water, I'd be able to refill my container. Although I did question some microorganisms that are in the water that can affect you. And the last thing I needed was to have to, to catch a crazy bug. I had a little money. Sipping on my water, and then I just I came across some other uh, international travelers. In fact, it was a, a woman who she was a um, uh, she went to China originally as uh, an exchange student, and then uh, ended up working as a uh, model over there. And she was from Nigeria, and uh, we struck up a great conversation. Um, I also met a Tibetan traveler. She was also there visiting and we were just kind of swapping stories. They, they all wanted to go to get something to eat. And then when we went to do that, they noticed that I didn't buy anything. And I basically said, listen, I don't have any cash to buy any food. You know, I'll be, I'll be okay in a couple of days. In fact, I'm going on this great cruise. So I'm not too worried about not eventually having something to eat. And they said, you know, that's nonsense. And they, they all chipped in and we all was able to break some bread together. And I think, again, a wonderful idea, a wonderful concept, and I'll be in for forever in their debt for doing that. So that was another lesson learned um, about paying it forward as a traveler. Uh, you just may find yourself in a situation where you can help another traveler. It's gonna be no big sweat off your back, but believe me, the person receiving the assistance uh, certainly appreciates it, and I certainly did. During that day, we had some other observations, which were kind of funny. And I think it's true today as it was when I was traveling. They don't see many foreigners. And I dare to say they don't see many foreigners of color. The fact that I was just um, an African-American dude in the country, I was a bit of an anomaly. So much so that <laughs> 
Asian parents were pushing their kids and making them come up to me and they would tug on my pant leg and ask to take a picture with me. And I just, I, I, <laughs> I was offended, but I was also gratified <laughs> by having that experience because at least uh, it showed that there was a level of curiosity. I felt like a superstar for just a moment. I was like, starting to get on my flight that next day, started to make my way towards my hotel. But as I landed, the problem I had was being able to procure transportation from the airport to my hotel. And the hotel was near the port of Tianjin. It wasn't really close, but it was like within five miles. What I found is the taxi drivers, like in many, any, many other places, like it's first come, first service, FIFO, first in, first out when it comes to your customers, right? So you get there, you're standing in queue, you're waiting for a ride, you get picked up based off of where you are in line. It doesn't quite work that way in China. I, they had to, I had to have been rejected by six or seven drivers who literally looked me up and down and was like, no, I'm not taking him. <laughs> no problem. Waited and waited and finally someone did. Um, uh, with the assistance again <laughs> of a porter, came over and said, um, you know, said in the looks, he asked me in very broken English, which I appreciate because his broken English was better than my, my even attempt at Mandarin. And the driver, you know, they were going back and forth and it was like, a, I don't know if it was an argument, it just could have been some um, spirited conversation. And then finally he said to me, he'll take. And I was like, oh, okay, he'll take, that sounds good. Um, oh, it, it, at this time, too, because I landed at the airport, I was able to pick up a few dollars from the, um, uh, AT, from the ATM. And I, you know, I peeled them off a, a, a few bucks, which I guess is always nice. He, he, he seemed like he wasn't used to getting tips, but I gave him a little something. He seemed appreciative of it. And so I get into the vehicle, and the driver had no idea of where to go. He didn't even bother to check his maps beforehand. He just got me in the vehicle and we just started to drive. And we were driving for about 30 minutes. And I was like, okay, I, I know from the map, the port is over here. And I know that my hotel isn't exactly at the port, but it's pretty close, but we're going pretty far out. I said, are you sure we're in the, and he was like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Drove off the highway. And then he gets on his cell phone and he's talking to someone. And then finally I hear him say, ah, 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 ah okay. And then uh, at that point, we got back on the highway, backtracked uh, for a few minutes, and then he pulled off again. Now at this time, I was pushing around 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. My reservation, of course, was for the day before at three o'clock. So I didn't even know when I got to my hotel, even if I had, or if I even had a hotel, but Again, that's a different story. He knew the name of the place and we kind of pulled into a couple of, you know, a gas station, um, a 7-Eleven type store, like people were telling him where to go. And we and we actually got in the area. So basically from his roadmap or whatever he was using, it said, uh, you have arrived. In the area that we were in, it was pretty rural. And we saw we saw no signs of like a hotel or anything like that. And he literally was gonna say, well, he said, I take you back to airport. I was like, no, 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 no. I said, let's just try to find something. So then we were creeping up this road that didn't even look like it. It wasn't even paved. It was like a, a dirt road. The end of that road, I said, oh, what's that? I saw some light. A and we looked and there tucked in behind was the hotel. It was actually a pretty nice hotel. I was surprised about that. But it was like one of those like um, off the beaten path, you know, three or four star hotel. Got there, was able to check in. The person basically said, you know, you were supposed to be here yesterday. We thought you canceled. So <laughs> you lost the room. And of course, there was no way for me to contact them because the, the, my phone didn't work. And I just, there's no way for me to contact them. I knew this was gonna be a potential issue. So what she was able to do for me, and I appreciate her for this, was because my room was already taken and she actually put me in a junior suite. So out of this ordeal, instead of getting like a, a single with a king bed, um, I got a junior suite, the fireplace. <laughs> Talk about dumb luck. I needed some, some, some type, of, type of luck. 
and she didn't charge me an upcharge. She still honored the pricing I got for, um, I, I got off of um, Hotels.com. So that was really, that was really nice of her to be able to do that for. Me. Now uh, I'm at the hotel, I make my way to the cruise terminal. Um, I explained to the, uh, the, the front desk person the challenges I had with, you know, trying to get a ride from the hotel, from the uh, airport to the hotel and all the challenges I've been having during my travel and <laughs> all the pain I was suffering. She, she understood, she said, listen, I'm gonna call my friend who has a ride service and he'll take you. Now, to me, you hear that in the States and that's a scam, right? You know, someone has a friend and they have special rates to take you. And I just, I was like, you know, at this point, I have to get on this ship. I hook up my crook, I'm gonna pay whatever it is. And it actually turned out that th this person was legit. He gave him a pretty good, um, a pretty good fare and tip. So that part of the travel went fine. The other part worth mentioning here is the embarkation point. It was probably one of the longest processes I've ever had to deal with during uh, an embark embarkation. Everything was highly scrutinized, double, triple checked my visa paperwork. Um, the lines were slow. I was pulled to the side for you no know, screening. And I, I don't know how that was possible, but I, I was. Yeah, I finally, I finally got onto the boat. You know, all in all, I, I know this was, you know, it's this is a pretty, pretty atypical situation for most travelers. I just want to let you know that um, it's not going to always be rosy. You're not going to always be able to catch your flight perfectly, get to your destination perfectly, and um, everything works out. There are going to be challenges um, that uh, affront you and you have to find a way to navigate through by staying calm, cool, and just using the resources around you. Also, just live that whole philosophy or life of paying it forward. So if you come across any wayward travelers having issues or challenges, please do me a favor, do yourself a favor, and do that travel a favor and help them out and give them a hand up and don't expect anything in return because it's fed, that's energy fed back into the universe, right? And um, it really does help the person that was, is having the situation, but it also helps yourself, right? Because you always want to be a um, steward of, of, of this travel life that we have. That's all I have to say. Thank you for, uh, you know, sitting here and listening to this little story time I had for you. It's a little different than what I've usually done in terms of um, my travel tips and tricks. But just, I think, the narrative of what could potentially happen to you while going on a cruise, I think, speaks for itself. I don't want you to be caught behind the eight ball like I was. And I consider, I consider myself a pretty savvy traveler. I, I've been to a lot of places and I've been all over the world but I wasn't really prepared for my Asia experience. I am now hardened to that and don't take things for granted. And as I say that, <laughs> I'm sitting here at Seattle International Airport SeaTac um, because I've missed my flight by five minutes and I'm living that cruise life. <laughs> so in any event, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time. Got a very interesting one for you as I make my way to Boston. Real quick, funny note. Um, <laughs> I planned a trip to see my daughter's graduation. I thought I had everything settled and, and planned out perfectly. And of course, I ran into traffic at the airport. Long story short, um, I missed my flight by five minutes. It was the last flight of the day. So guess what? I'm getting on the first flight tomorrow. So. That's a great introduction to talk to you today about my travels when I had cruises and some of the gotchas in Asia. So I just wanted to share that with you. Hey, this is Eric from the Post Edit. Just wanted to make a couple corrections. Throughout the video, I kept calling the airline that I flew on Asiana Airways. That really was China Airways. Also, I made reference to Oasis of the Seas. It was actually Ovation of the Seas.
I apologize. It happens. I'm getting old. Remember to like and subscribe and click that bell.